In an age of evolving geopolitical tensions and rapid advancements in technology, a new marvel of engineering emerged. A machine designed to redefine dominance in the skies. Born out of a shared vision and forged through decades of collaboration and innovation, it became more than a weapon. It symbolized the unity and ingenuity of a continent. This aircraft is none other than the Eurofighter Typhoon. The late 20th century was marked by a Cold War arms race that extended beyond nuclear deterrence into advancements in aerospace technology. The advent of high-speed interceptors and the increasing complexity of integrated air defense systems necessitated a response that was as much about maintaining strategic balance as it was about technical superiority. For Europe, the need for a unified approach stemmed not only from shared defense concerns, but also from a desire to reduce reliance on American-built platforms, which had dominated NATO's inventory for decades. The decision to pursue a European-built fighter also reflected a growing industrial ambition, showcasing the engineering might of nations like the UK, Germany, and Italy. Its story begins in the late 1970s during the height of the Cold War. European nations faced a critical challenge. Their aging fleets of fighter aircraft were becoming obsolete, and the next generation of aerial threats demanded a revolutionary response. The solution? A multinational endeavor to create a combat aircraft that could adapt to the demands of future warfare. The United Kingdom, Germany, Italy, and later Spain joined forces to develop what would become a masterpiece of aeronautical engineering. By the late 1970s, the Panavia Tornado, a collaborative effort among the UK, Germany, and Italy, had proven that multinational aircraft programs were not only feasible, but also highly effective. However, the Tornado was primarily a ground attack aircraft, leaving a gap in air superiority roles. The Soviet Union's advancements, particularly with aircraft like the MiG-29 and Su-27, underscored the need for a fighter that could counteract these threats. This urgency catalyzed the drive for a European solution, embedding not only military objectives, but also a sense of regional pride and technical competition with the United States. Early efforts were spearheaded by British Aerospace, now BAE Systems, with the Agile Combat Aircraft, ACA, program. The ACA paved the way for the Experimental Aircraft Program, EAP, in 1982, a testbed for the technologies that would later define the Typhoon. British engineers envisioned a fighter that could outperform Soviet counterparts in agility and survivability. The EAP emerged as a laboratory for integrating advanced materials like carbon composites and experimental fly-by-wire systems. It also highlighted early efforts in reducing radar cross-sections through innovative airframe designs, a precursor to what would later become critical in stealth technology. By 1983, the European Fighter Aircraft EFA program was launched bringing together the best minds and resources of the participating nations. Though the journey was fraught with political disagreements, shifting priorities, and financial constraints, the determination to create a state-of-the-art fighter prevailed. France's departure from the program to pursue the Dassault Rafale highlighted underlying tensions. France sought control over its national defense projects while other nations prioritized shared decision-making and cost-sharing. The German reunification of 1990 added another layer of complexity. While the Cold War's conclusion momentarily diminished the urgency for a next-generation fighter, the Gulf War soon highlighted the importance of air superiority in modern conflicts, reigniting the project's momentum. The first prototype took to the skies in March 1994 showcasing groundbreaking technologies, including the Delta Canard configuration that optimized lift and maneuverability. Engineers had to fine tune the aircraft's digital control systems to handle the aerodynamic instability that gave the Typhoon its agility. 
By 1997, the contract for full-scale production was signed, cementing a legacy that continues to this day. What sets the Typhoon apart is its radical approach to design. Unlike traditional aircraft, which prioritize stability, this fighter embraces aerodynamic instability. While this might seem counterintuitive, it gives the Typhoon unparalleled agility. The decision to design the Typhoon as aerodynamically unstable stemmed from the pursuit of maximum responsiveness. Controlled by an advanced fly-by-wire system, the instability allows for sharp turns and rapid maneuvers, a critical advantage in dogfights and high-speed combat scenarios. Traditional designs prioritize stability to reduce pilot workload, but for combat scenarios where split-second reactions could mean life or death, instability became a tactical advantage. The fly-by-wire system utilized quadruple redundant digital computers to interpret pilot inputs, allowing for precise adjustments to the control surfaces at speeds faster than human reaction times. This capability also opened avenues for future automation and AI-assisted flight. This design also reduces drag, enhancing speed and fuel efficiency. Powered by two EJ200 engines, the Typhoon achieves supercruise, sustained supersonic flight without afterburners, a feature that underscores its engineering brilliance. But the Typhoon's evolution didn't stop there. Each successive tranche has pushed the boundaries of its capabilities. The first tranche, introduced in the early 2000s, focused on establishing air superiority. These aircraft played a vital role in exercises that simulated Cold War era dogfights, where their agility consistently outmatched older models like the F-16 and F-4 Phantom. Early deployments demonstrated the Typhoon's ability to seamlessly integrate with NATO's networked defense systems, setting the stage for broader mission profiles in later variants. Armed with cutting-edge air-to-air -air missiles like the AMRAAM and IRIS-T, it excelled in aerial combat. However, the changing nature of warfare demanded more than dominance in the skies. The second tranche marked a significant shift, transforming the Typhoon into a true multi-role platform. Enhanced avionics and the integration of advanced air-to-ground weaponry, such as Storm Shadow and Taurus missiles, allowed it to strike targets with precision from great distances. The conflicts in the Middle East underscored the importance of precision strikes. New weaponry like the Storm Shadow cruise missile enabled the Typhoon to neutralize high-value targets from a distance, minimizing risk to pilots. Engineers also enhanced the aircraft's survivability by integrating Defensive Aid Subsystems DASS, that could detect and counteract incoming missiles, further solidifying its reputation as a versatile and reliable platform. The third tranche brought structural enhancements and cutting-edge computing systems. This version was designed with future upgrades in mind, ensuring the aircraft could integrate emerging technologies. The structural modifications in tranche three were designed with modularity in mind, allowing for the seamless integration of next-generation sensors and weapons. A highlight of this trench is its compatibility with the Captor EAESA radar, offering unparalleled target tracking and situational awareness. These aircraft benefited from cutting-edge mission computers that could process vast amounts of battlefield data in real time. The delayed rollout of the Captor E radar highlighted the complexities of integrating advanced systems, but it also underscored the Typhoon's adaptability as earlier variants could be retrofitted with this game-changing technology. Beyond its technical prowess, the Typhoon has proven itself in real-world operations. From enforcing no-fly zones over Libya under Operation Unified Protector to precision strikes in Iraq and Syria, it has demonstrated versatility and reliability across diverse missions. In Libya, the Typhoon's performance showcased its ability to transition between air superiority and ground attack roles within a single sortie. Pilots lauded its advanced cockpit ergonomics and helmet-mounted displays, which provided unparalleled situational awareness. 
In Iraq and Syria, its precision-guided munitions minimized collateral damage, earning it a reputation for operational reliability in complex environments. It's also a cornerstone of NATO's air defense strategy, playing a pivotal role in air policing and rapid reaction missions across Europe. As we look to the future, the Typhoon's legacy will endure alongside new advancements. The Global Combat Air Program, GCAP, a collaboration between the UK, Italy, and Japan, is set to deliver a sixth generation fighter that will complement and eventually succeed the Typhoon. The Tempest is expected to incorporate swarm technology where unmanned drones operate in tandem with the fighter, creating a networked ecosystem of platforms. The emphasis on AI-driven decision-making aims to reduce pilot workload and enhance tactical responsiveness. While the Typhoon will continue to serve as a vital component of European air power, its role will gradually shift to complementing and enabling the capabilities of the Tempest, ensuring seamless continuity in defense strategy. Incorporating cutting-edge technologies like artificial intelligence, stealth, and unmanned system integration, this new platform, dubbed the Tempest, will ensure air dominance well into the future. Yet the Typhoon remains a formidable force, with ongoing upgrades keeping it at the forefront of military aviation.